Rebuilding a Vintage Open Steam Launch, Part 10, and it's time to look at the engine. This one is Steam Engine Problems and Repairs. What I'm doing at the moment is using a dial test indicator with a magnetic base that is clamped to my 7.25 inch rails on the bench, and by holding the engine firmly down to the bench whilst rotating the crankshaft, I can see how far the flywheel is out. And it looks like the wobble on the flywheel is mainly down to the fact that the crankshaft bearings are quite worn. Anyway, I gave it a little bit of adjustment and as you can see now, the threaded part, the centre part of the crankshaft, is running fairly true. I am fully aware that any proper engineers or experts watching this are now probably reaching for the keyboard. And you ain't seen nothing yet, look at this. Not just one bolt sheared off and stuck on with glue, two of them. There's the second one gone, it just fell off. I could of course clean up this steam chest cover and then glue the nuts back on, but no I'm not going to do that, I'm going to repair it properly. As I start to unbolt the nuts on the steam chest cover, the first nut comes out complete with the stud, but the others seem to be okay. One thing's puzzling me though, why is the steam chest cover on this side of the engine much thicker than the steam chest cover on the other side? The other side looks like it's a proper Stuart steam chest, whereas this one just looks like a piece of random steel that's been drilled and fitted to the steam chest. I'll find out more about that later on, I'm sure. So here are the last two bolts coming off, complete with the big splodges of paint all over them. And now it's fun time. Getting this cover off was extremely difficult. I don't ever think I've had this many problems before, getting a steam chest cover off. First of all I used the craft knife, then a small screwdriver, then a larger screwdriver and eventually it started to move. But it was firmly stuck to the steam chest. And I mean firmly stuck. There's a gasket in there somewhere and a lot of what looks like some kind of adhesive or sealant. One problem I immediately noticed because it really is very common. The holes in the steam chest are not the same as the holes in the steam chest cover. So what happens is the steam chest goes over the studs and moves the position of the studs so when you come to put the steam chest cover on it's a very tight fit. And it doesn't look like the holes on the steam chest cover have been particularly drilled out. But look at this stuff, what is it? It's horrible. It's probably been in there for 50 years which doesn't help. So all I can do is just scrape this stuff away slowly but surely revealing what's underneath. I think the part in the middle of the steam chest is the slide valve but that is also covered in this mess, so it's barely recognisable. I really am committed with this now to removing the entire steam chest. So I take the pin out of the eccentric rod, and once again, starting with my craft knife, followed by a small screwdriver and a larger screwdriver, I eventually get the steam chest off. But not just yet, because the steam chest isn't really stuck to the port face, it's wedged onto the studs, which are all too tight. So I'm going to attempt to remove one or two of the studs, just to release the pressure, and I don't mean steam pressure. And eventually, after a lot of grief, it ends up like this. So now it's time to remove the rest of the studs. The two studs that are nearest to the inlet manifold are the ones that are broken. That's because the inlet manifold bolts go straight into the steam chest and then hit the studs. In my opinion, I'm looking at a little bit of a mechanical disaster area that will need putting right. But it's not a massive problem really because I do like a challenge and it does at least keep me off the streets. The good news is the rest of the studs came out a little bit too easily. They had to be in their slack to allow them to move around when the steam chest was forced on with the holes slightly in the wrong position. And with the last of these studs in the bin, I can now have a look at the port face. But before I can see the port face, I need to just scrape it a little bit. I'm using the edge of a ruler for this, which is ideal. And eventually, after much scraping, I moved on from scraping to using some scotch Bright. So now finally, I can see what I'm having to work with, and the port face looks okay. Now that I have the engine stripped down to this extent, I'm removing the fitting that I put on a couple of episodes ago, because basically, I don't really like it, and I'm going to look at a better arrangement. Plus, I've found something out that is quite serious. By serious, I mean in a small steam engine way. See if you can spot it before I show it at the end. 
Once I removed the brass fitting, the bolts that held the brass fitting to the steam chest were no longer clamping the broken studs in place, so literally they fell out of the holes once the bolts were removed. I'll have a quick look at the slide valve, and it looks okay. And what I'm doing at the moment is giving everything a good clean up on some wet to dry sandpaper with some oil, so I can really see what I have to play with. And the more I look and feel at this component, and in fact listen to it when I tap it with a screwdriver, the more concerned I am. If you look carefully, you'll see a crack. Can you see it? I don't mean the thread that's broken through the crossbar that drives the valve. I'll just make a new one of those. It's a definite crack. So anyway, I'll carry on for the moment and remove the rest of the mess from the inside of the steam chest, and I'll give the valve a good clean up as well. The only problem I can actually see with the valve is that it's a little bit tight on the crossbar. So I gave it a little bit of a rub with a needle file, the lightest of rubs with a needle file. I'm actually going to make a new crossbar to drive this valve, so I didn't really need to do that, but I do like to make sure everything's squared up. In this clip I'm making a couple of gaskets, and I'm using the steam chest cover as a template for the gaskets, because the steam chest cover actually fits on the studs, whereas the steam chest itself is a very tight fit, and doesn't line up properly with the studs in any position. And as the steam chest is cracked, I'm going to make a new one anyway. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.